What happens when would-be criminals out there commit crimes in virtual reality? Virtual murder, virtual rape, virtual robbery. Welcome to True Crime Boss. I'm Jarrett Farentino. Well, folks, it's happening. We live in a virtual world. Now we have to come up with what do we do with the criminals and the victims in that world? We have created, companies have created these immersive environments. And the goal of these environments is to make it as real as possible. Make a roller coaster feel real. Make a hand glide feel real. Make a day at the beach feel real. What happens when would-be criminals out there commit crimes in virtual reality? What do we as prosecutors and defense attorneys and the victims and the bad actors out there have to do with it? Here's what we have to do, folks. Right now in the UK, there is a young minor female who was gang raped in a virtual world. This is someone who has suffered the mental and emotional fallout of being raped, but it happened in the virtual world. This matter is under investigation and has kicked off a larger conversation. What do we do with virtual crimes? I look at it this way. I am sure the law will eventually catch up with the advances in technology, but we live in the meantime right now. What do we do with people that are committing these acts? First and foremost, this should be a warning to parents. If your child is operating in these virtual worlds, how would you feel if you were visited by a police officer who says, your child participated in a gang rape last night in a virtual room. You would be horrified, no doubt, even though it was a virtual act. That is not something you want to condone. And inevitably in this conversation, and we're going to break it down a little further, somebody says, well, it's different when you kill an avatar on Grand Theft Auto. Folks, I've been playing video games for 40 years of my life. I get it. We're not talking about when Trevor kills somebody in Grand Theft Auto. We're talking about two individuals linked together in a virtual reality world, communicating, sharing pain, sharing laughter, and sharing crime and victimization. How do we deal with it? How do we deal with it with today's laws? So I started to look into this and kind of created a fake fact pattern as if it happened here and I was confronted with these facts. And if a minor female was gang assaulted by these individuals, let's assume for a moment some of these individuals are minors and some of them are adults. If that happened, number one, I would venture to say they were communicating with this minor about sexual content. That alone, folks, is unlawful communication with a minor, a very serious sexual offense. If you're texting with a minor about sex and sex things, beware. You will be held accountable. In most states, you will be required to register as a sex offender, whether it was happening in the virtual world or not. And the commenters on the articles are all saying, switch off, take your virtual glasses off. That's not the answer, folks. People love to oversimplify everything. The reality is that, does, that doesn't mean you, you could be harassed on a phone. You could hang up the phone. It doesn't make the crime or the victimization any less because you can disconnect from it. That's a cop-out. The reality is we have to weigh these issues. So on the books right now, we have online harassment charges, for example, and they tend to be misdemeanor type charges where you are repeatedly and without invitation and with no real purpose communicating with someone over and over again. And the tone of that conversation becomes harassing. You start to harass someone about their physical appearance. You start to bully them essentially online. You can be guilty of online harassment crimes that exist today. This is not a what if, this is not a chance, this isn't something that is an open question. People have been prosecuted for these things. The second thing is when that harassment graduates to a stalking situation where you're repeatedly engaging in these unwelcome behaviors, told to stop, and it, and it carries on over a period of time, that's online stalking. 
that tends to be a misdemeanor of the first degree, even worse than online harassment, which could carry jail time. People think when they're behind a computer screen, they operate with impunity. I can do what I want. I can say what I want. You certainly can't threaten a government leader. You can't threaten to blow something up. The FBI is going to show up at your house. There is no advanced or greater protection because you're behind your computer. Uh, you People need to be aware of this situation. We don't have to wait for the law to catch up with these situations. Parents should also be aware these crimes exist and your kids could be held responsible. Don't be under the ignorant assumption that these crimes don't carry very serious consequences. But then there's this larger question. Can somebody be gang raped or murdered online? And then the question immediately goes to, well, this isn't their physical person. This is an avatar. I think that part of the conversation is kind of a waste of time. Clearly, it's an avatar. Clearly, you know, rape charges and sexual assault charges not to be disgusting folks, but really they turn to whether or not someone is penetrated digitally or whether or not there's actual intercourse. That is clearly not happening in a virtual situation. But here's what's happening. The theory behind all crime is essentially there is an actor who intends to commit a criminal act. That intention is made in their mind. They commit the overt act, which is the harassment or the gang rape type behavior online. The consequences of that victim are emotional in nature. They can, they can suffer mental anguish as a result. That's no joke, folks. It's just no joke. I understand it's not the same thing, but you could be guilty of serious crimes today before the law even catches up with it. Before we even talk about... This was a pink elephant avatar raping a pony. Okay, that's a little bit of an oversimplification and a red herring in this conversation. Trust me when I tell you, there are very serious consequences for that type of behavior in the online world. Here's where you're going to run into some problems, though. There's jurisdictional issues. You could be talking to someone from the comfort of your home in California, and you could be talking to someone in Pennsylvania. You could be talking to someone in Zimbabwe. How do we deal with it? What has to happen is there is right now task forces that are addressing child pornography rings and things of that nature across the world, and they're working internationally to combat that type of behavior. Folks, this is bizarre behavior. Anybody who wants to participate in gang rape type situations online is a dangerous person. This is a downright dangerous sexual proclivity. This isn't something that's just fun or kids being kids. There's something going on here, something deeper. So before we even get to that criminal question, you need to see what the kids are doing online. If this is the kind of people they're associating with, just imagine how dangerous some of the people participating in that kind of behavior are. So I could tell you, as the conversation is turning to consequencing people for virtual crimes, people need to be aware you could get in trouble today for that kind of behavior. What is the defense to that kind of behavior? Because we try to call both sides of the ball on our show. The defense to that kind of behavior is prove it was me. Prove I was behind the computer. How are you going to get a warrant served in another jurisdiction? These are difficulties that law enforcement may have to deal with in carrying out these investigations. And this is not to say that a physical rape is the same thing as a virtual rape. One of the things I was reviewing some articles on the UK case and there was a criticism that, hey, look, you know, we have a backlog of actual rape cases and I get that. And in no way are we trying to negate rapes that are happening in the real world. That is a terrible, terrible, traumatic crime. I've prosecuted them myself. I'm well aware there is a difference between a physical rape and the physical harm that befalls someone, but we cannot ignore the physical or mental consequences that can flow from a virtual assault. This is no joke, and we're going to start seeing this more and more. And beyond just prosecuting these things as a parent, we need to know these dangers are out there. This is just another way our kids could be getting hurt. We need to be aware and, and essentially fortify ourselves to protecting our kids from these kinds of behaviors. 
I look at this stuff. I know looking down the road, this is coming. It's going to create a whole new area of law and a whole new area of prosecution. But I think certainly across the United States of America, the law has evolved. We have prosecuted cybercrime as technology advances, criminal prosecution advances. I look at white collar crime that's been prosecuted in the cyber world. These are nonviolent type crimes. I think the FBI and states across the country have done a fantastic job of learning this technology, presenting it in courts. These types of crimes are no different. We have to get better at putting them together, consequencing individuals that would commit these violent acts out there. Anybody capable of that is dangerous in the real world. We're not talking about Trevor on Grand Theft Auto. That's a that's a terrible oversimplification. Certainly, I have seen, and as a player of these types of video games, it doesn't necessarily mean someone who wipes out an entire block of people on Grand Theft Auto is going to go do that in the real world. It's a different deal, folks. We're talking about actual children and victims being victimized online. So anyone who's hearing this presentation and going there, Play devil's advocate with yourself and ask yourself, why are we talking about this? Because people are suffering the consequences of these acts, and it's no joke. I look at the laws right now. I think we're going to get there, but we have laws on the book, on the books right now that you could be consequenced for. Stay alert. Watch what your kids are doing online. And know if you're online participating in these kinds of things, stop. It's a dangerous, slippery slope you're on.